So now comes a little bit more. So there are three forms of matter that exist on planet Earth. I know there's four, but we don't care about plasma because plasma exists in outer space and sound doesn't exist in outer space. So for this class, there's only three states of matter that we care about. Solid, liquid, gases. What's the difference between solid, liquid, and gas? Solid molecules are stuck in place. Liquid molecules flow over one another, whereas gas molecules can do whatever they want. Solid molecules are close to each other and they are arranged in an array or a lattice structure. Liquid molecules are free, free to flow within the liquid. <clears throat> Their bonds constantly are broken, remade, broken, remade. Gas molecules move in all three dimensions. Like here, you cannot control what each of the particles of gas is doing, okay? So clear so far? Now, how does that affect this propagation of sound? So for solids, remember I said that they were stuck in place? The amount by which the sound travels is how much it hits and goes away, right? So each molecule is stuck in place and molecules will oscillate or vibrate. And when a pressure wave goes through, each molecule will hit the next one. And that's what's gonna cause the sound to travel. We have seen this formula before but we saw it with an E. I just wanted you to see it with also a Y. It's the same exact formula that we saw last time. So sound waves traveling in a thin rod will be given by this formula, where Y is the Young's modulus and rho is the density, which is mass per unit volume. And I did say that there was gonna be another question which is this one. So this question says, what will be the speed of a longitudinal wave in a brass bar, given that the density of brass is 8.4 grams per cubic centimeter, and the value of the Young's modulus is 110 times 10 to the nine newtons per meter squared. So how do you find the speed? Square root of y over rho. So the y is given as 110 times 10 to the nine newtons per meter squared. And the density is given as 8.4 grams per centimeter cube. There is a problem. Technically, I could just plug both of them in here and be done. But I can't because what is wrong with these two? The units are off. So we have to now convert the units. How do we do that? So this would be 88.4 grams need to be converted to kilograms. So how many grams in a kilogram? A thousand. And since this is a cube, that means how many times do I have to multiply it? Three times. So I will do one meter time one meter time one meter or a hundred centimeters time a hundred centimeters time a hundred centimeters. So that means the grams will go away, the centimeter cube Three of these will go away because there should be three of them. And what am I left with? 8.4 times 100 times 100 times 100 kilograms divided by 1,000 meter cubed. See, there's three of them here. One, two, three. So somebody do the math. Um, it'll be technically one, two, one, two, one, two. So I think it'll be like eight, four, zero, zero. Yes. Yay. OK. 
kilograms per meter cubed. So that is my density. Now I can plug them in, take the square root and find the answer. So we will be 110 times 10 to the nine divided by 8400. Remember to take the big square root. I generally, when I plug these values in, I'll do the insides first. So I'll do 110 to the 10 to the nine divided by 8400. Then once I find the answer for that, then I will square root it. It just works better for most calculators. I got 3,618. 3,618. So compare this to the speed of sound in air. So speed of sound at 20 degrees Celsius in air was 343 meters per second. So the speed of sound in brass is 10 times more than in air. Um, the speed of sound in liquid, so when we're thinking about liquids, the speed remains the same. So if you look at the formula, V equals V over rho, the only difference between the speed of sound in solids and the speed of sound in liquids is the fact that this changed. Instead of Y here, we have a bulk modulus. And the reason for that change is that liquids are compressible and they're three-dimensional. So instead of using the Young's modulus, we use what is called the bulk modulus. Other than that, the formula is exactly the same. In order to remember what this is, liquids and, and gases both can be compressed. So because of this compression, what happens when you compress something? Its volume becomes smaller as the pressure becomes larger. So B is defined as the ratio of delta P to the change in volume divided by V. Just remember this. As you increase pressure, you decrease the volume. Notice, when we were doing, what was the speed of sound in brass? About 3,600. The speed of sound in air is about 343. The speed of sound in liquid is about 1,500. So which of the three does the speed of sound travel the fastest in? Liquid, solids, or gases? Solids. And which is the next one? water, liquid, and which is the least one in air. Then how many of you have ever swum, uh, swum underwater? If my statement is true, then shouldn't you hear more underwater? Has anyone noticed that? Do you actually hear more? And the answer is no. You don't hear more, and there is a reason for it. Our ears are meant as devices that hear in air. So they vibrate with the frequencies in air. Sound does travel faster through water. It's just our detectors are not capable of hearing that, okay? On the other hand, whales, right? Have you heard that they can hear over thousands of miles, right? This is the reason. Sound does travel faster through water. Oh, and it also depends the, the uh, yes, and seawater, it depends on pressure. So as the depth increases, as the temperature increases, and as the salinity increases, the speed of sound changes as all of those things happen. So in freshwater, it travels differently. 
in um, seawater, it travels differently now. Okay, and so again, the speed of sound and gas, the same formula as the one for uh, the one that we did for liquids, because gases can also be compressed. Anything that can be compressed, use this. Anything that cannot be compressed, use the Young's modulus, like for solids, right? Another formula, probably not very important, but I would like you to just see it once. Chemistry. When people are in chemistry, they use this one to find the speed of sound in air because they are more concerned with the molecular weight of stuff, which we are not. But you should see this at least once. And if you put all the values of all of those things, guess what? What will you get? You get the same answer. Okay. Um, do you see this versus this versus that? Is that what we were saying? Speed of sound is the least in air, more in liquids, and most in solid. Um, interestingly, ha has anyone ever done that? Like inhaled helium and you sound funny? Yeah? And have, have you ever wondered why? Okay, there is a very physics-y and a nerdy explanation for that. Do you guys want to hear it? No? <laughs> That's cool. We should hear it and it still be funny when you do it next time. But now you'll know why. And there is a very physics-y reason for it, and which is that the speed of sound actually changes in helium. It becomes three times. So the speed of sound in helium is 972, whereas the speed of sound is 343. So it's three times more. And that is why you have that funny helium voice. Because sound actually travels at a different speed. So the next time it'll be more fun in my head when you try the helium voice and you'll be like, I know why that's happening and it's still fun. <laughs>